Good morning and happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there today. May God bless you and keep you for the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, right? And let us put on the armor of light. Good morning. May God bless you and keep you today. Let's start off in prayer. And as I pray, we're going to come out of the book of Luke, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Did you repent today? Did you repent today? Luke 13, 1 through 9. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this Father's Day. Thank you for the fathers that are here. Thank you for the fathers who have came from, uh, from previous generations. Thank you for the fathers to be. Bless and keep us today, Heavenly Father. Watch over those in nursing homes who are in prisons. Bless those who are protesting. Bless those in, in high positions of authority. That they may have the spirit of the sermon. That something may happen to trigger some type of love and compassion in their hearts. Bless and watch over them today, Heavenly Father. Trigger them. Trigger some type of emotions coming out of these individuals today all across the globe. That they may find some love and peace in their hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Luke 13, 1 through 9. Luke 13, 1 through 9. Did you repent today? Right? There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you no, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, which uh, think that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? Hmm. I tell you no, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Get this, verses 3 and 5. And he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree, planted it in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Be, Behold, that these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cometh to the ground? And he, that which is the dresser, answering, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. Right? Let me give it a second chance. Right? And if it bear fruit, well, and if it not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Amen. So when you look at this passage of scripture, this discussion begins with some anger, right? Some, some anger, some, some questions about the sacrifices of God and Rome. Get this. That's what the people are concerned with. God is only concerned with repentance. I'm giving you the nugget already. So when you speak of a people who have been led by God, right? The, these Galileans, these Hebrew people, right? They've been led by God and, and through generations have believed in the Pentateuch, right? It is, it, it is the guiding principles of God watching and protecting and guiding them throughout all generations, protecting his people through wars and famine. Look at this, Habakkuk 2 and 1, right? I will stand upon my rock. This is in relation to the Hebrew people. And set them upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what shall I answer when I am reproved? It's about standing your watch in faithfulness, knowing that in righteousness or in unrighteousness, that God is reproving you either for goodness, right? For your goodness or those things that you need to work on in your life. Amen. So back to our text. What is Jesus reminding us of in this passage of scripture today? Of these 18 at the power of Siloam. Let me get this right. There are, let me unpack it. There are nine verses here, right? And in this are two stories dealing with repentance. There are two ways or two notions of how one dies. Get this. Yes, the obvious is that we can die the physical death, and we will all do that very suddenly or slowly, right? But as you notice, Christ is not concerned with those two things, Rome nor the offering. Rome, Rome had already crucified thousands. Why aren't they concerned with that? So what was the point? And, and he is always aware of our proportional giving, right? Our sacrificial giving or our faith-filled giving for all belongs to him. Cattle of a thousand hills belong to him. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. It all belongs to me from the inner parts of the, of the earth and to the entire universe belongs to me anyway. So discernment. Christ's main concern is salvation and repentance in this passage. No matter the manner in which we die, did you repent today? Discernment. You die physically and you die spiritually, right? He's concerned about the spiritual death. One thing Jesus is telling us is that you will die for 100%. That's 100%. And so in your spiritual death, if you do not repent or have repented of your sins, 
you will surely die. You don't want to die that death, right? Which is eternal damnation. My second point, the, 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 the second event is this parable of a man, a certain man who had a fig tree and he religiously checked on it for growth, right? For production. He kept it dressed. He tilled around it. He fertilized it, right? He kept it uh, designed and, 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 you know, and wanted to make sure that it bared fruit, right? He was concerned with this, right? And here's the conversation. Let's look at the main focus of this talk. It says, Jesus says, of these 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? He's not minimizing the thoughts or, uh, of his audience, but he is reminding them that the motive of one's death doesn't determine their righteousness or unrighteousness. So going back to the man in the, vine in the vineyard, I've done everything I can, right? But I am going to give it a second chance. I'm going to do everything I can to give it a chance, second chance to repent. I'm going to, this is the slow death, right? God is affirming, get this, an everlasting covenant with his people for an eternity. That's true. God is affirming through the promise of Abraham that your numbers will be more than the, than the sand on the seashore and the stars in the sky. God is affirming that if you follow the clouds during the day, you will not burn, right? And if you follow the fire by night, you will stay warm in the bosom of Abraham, God's grace and mercy. And because of the love of Christ that dwells in all of us, right? He gives us the spirit of discernment or this juxtaposition to understand that when tragedy does occur, where we see several victims perish, whether an airline crashes, bus crashes, right? Or these shooting events that we don't sit back and say they must have been sinners. So that's why they died a tragic death. No, because of the love of Christ that lives in all of us that, that came about one day at Pentecost protects us from this irrational way of thinking. So we now understand that we all have sinned and fallen short of, of God's grace. Romans 5 and 15, for through the offenses of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. So in conclusion, in terms of Bible application or how does this relate to our life today? Let's look at something current. The murder of George Floyd, John Crawford III, Laquan McDonald, Tanisha Anderson, Akia Gurley, or Frank Smart, right? Maybe even Eric Garner or Michael Brown or Breonna Taylor or Walter Scott or Freddie Gray. Or maybe even Sandra Bland or Dominique Hutchison or Tyree Crawford or India Kager or maybe Randy Nelson, Darius Robinson or Philandro Castile. Those 18, right? These are just 18 who have died or, or out, of the, out of the hundreds in the past decade. And the more, the more recent the tragedy, the more quickly we can identify with the names of these men and women. So it is unfortunate, right, that with each passing generation, black children see this list expanding. That's part of our history and our heritage that we don't want to continue to repeat. And the question is, were these 18 any different than the 18 working on the Tower of Shalom? God forbid. Were they bad people in the sight of God? No. Did God give them a chance to repent at some point in their life? More than likely. Was an opportunity ever given to them to repent? Yes. So what separates the murder from the murderer in God's eyes? Well, it's the season. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says, To everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal. There is a time to weep, and a time to laugh, and a time to mourn, and a time to dance. And there is a time to get, and a time to lose, and a time to keep, and a time to cast away. I can go on and on and on, but there is a season for all of these things. And how tragic they are, they hurt. But as believers in Jesus Christ, did you repent today? Did you repent today? from the Tulsa race riots to uh, every event, every tragic event that has happened in the United States. Did you repent today? God said, let the wheat and the tares grow together for when I come, I'll separate them. Don't you judge them. God is a God of love. He's a God of repentance and he is the key to salvation. You were chosen to bear fruit. He died to give us the opportunity to, to bear fruit. And God is not going to wait through these several seasons for spiritual change to occur in your life if he's already given you the opportunity once. Did you repent today? He is not concerned with the manner in which you have died, for when you die, he wants to give you salvation. May God bless you and keep you on this Father's Day. Watch over those fathers out there and those fathers-to-be. Continue to bless us with a forgiving heart and a forgiving mind. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.